Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hello? Hey guys, let's go. Kriegsmarine, unsupported and left to die. Original link to the video, top of the description below. Potential history. Great channel. Let's go. Right into it. Go. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. End of the world be mighty cold. End of the world be mighty cold. Prepare for the... I've heard of these crack gods. For the war. So you got three ships. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Squarespace. The easy and reliable way to build a website for yourself or war. your business. Use my code potential history for 10% off your first Make sure to use that code. I'm able to react to this stuff, especially when it's it's monetized. Make sure if you are doing the Squarespace order, the Squarespace use potential histories uh, promo uh, code, which is for yourself or your business. Use my code potential history for potential history. 10% off your first Squarespace order, but more on that a little bit later. So this is a patron request video from Gerald Tan for being in my mouse tier on Patreon. And unlike most people who have a very specific video topic they want talked about, he left his broad, simply saying he wanted something on German battleships. As the Kriegsmarine and the Battle of the Atlantic isn't really my forte, it took me a second to come up with what the video should be about. But as I was finishing up video two of the Pacific series, Yes, it's taken a while, my apologies. Talking about how the Japanese were playing with battleships in the carrier war, I began to ask myself how Germany with an even smaller navy was even to take on and be what seems like a pretty big threat, at least as far as what I've heard, to the Royal Navy. With just a few battleships, some U-boats, and no carriers. This one doesn't count. And what I found really surprised me because it's a no carriers. This one Graph Zeppelin. One doesn't count. Okay. And what I found really surprised me because it's all very different when you get down into it and not quite what the sensationalized documentaries say it was. Following World War I, the Kriegsmarine was limited in manpower and technology, like the rest of the German military. But after the Nazis came to power, the restrictions were moved aside and ships began to be built, with the idea of a large high seas fleet in mind. Germany knew that in the next war it would have to once again compete with the Royal Navy that defeated it in World War I. And the how cool do the battleships and destroyers look? I, I just feel like the the aircraft carrier kind of way of today is obviously it it's it's dominant for a reason, but it just it doesn't look as cool as like these giant battleships. Current biggest boat boy, Admiral Eric Rader, laid out an all encompassing plan in nineteen thirty nine to accomplish this called Plan Z. Oh, oh. It was approved by Hitler and assumed to reach its peak by 1948, as it would obviously take time and materials to put together this thing that would be able to rival the British Navy. However, Hitler started the war within a year and the whole plan kind of went out the window. The grand German strategy was that of commerce raiding, that to strangle the British into submission, the Germans would have to cut off imports and essentially starve them out in a way. The problem was, when the war started, they didn't really have the necessary materials to do this, with their U-boats in the double digits and only a handful of real large ships and about 20 or so destroyers, with at this point the French Navy to still consider. And with it being such a small force, I began to be kind of surprised at the disconnect between the fame the Kriegsmarine gets and the limited impact that it could possibly have with such a small force. In the Pacific series, I've been talking a lot about how aircraft carriers were the defining implement of the war, and that as Japan lost aircraft carriers, it was losing its power to wage the war. Germany throughout the war didn't have any carriers on top of- Guadalcanal. They didn't need the aircraft carrier. Sorry, just PTSD. That had very few battleships and just ships in general, relying very heavily on their U-boats throughout, which did see a good bit of success through 1942. Now, this was the same sort of threat that the British faced in World War I, but found themselves having to adjust to it again in the Second World War. But it really didn't last. By May of 1943, the good times, as the Kriegsmarine called them, were over and the Germans were regularly losing more U-boats than they were sinking merchant vessels. And the battleships had trouble as well, with Plan Z never really getting off the ground before material had to be shifted to land-based production heavily, the Germans only had a handful to work with. 
sent to do commerce raiding as well, they were often sent out alone or in small numbers and were able to be tracked down by British air and sea power that was so overwhelming, not to mention the American air and sea power once they entered the war. The Admiral Graf Spey, for example, named after ya boy. Ya boy. Uh, I'd very much recommend watching Das Boot. Uh, it has English subtitles, or depends where you... Great movie. Sea power once they entered the war. The Admiral Graf Spey, for example, named after Ya Boy, was scuttled by her crew off the coast of South America when they thought they were outnumbered by British vessels due to some excellent deception tactics. The Bismarck, after sinking the pride of the Royal Navy, was pummeled to death when it was left by itself in the Atlantic after its escort Prince Eugen was detached. Its sister ship, the Tirpitz, was unable to do much itself as it was stuck in port for most of its life and eventually sunk by British bombers, although it took them a few tries. And the story for a lot of German ships really just kind of reads like that, some having more successful missions to their name than others. And don't get me wrong, the German Navy was a threat to British merchant shipping at the beginning of the war. And don't get... Sean Orr's had a pretty good career, but is an outlier. Get me wrong, the German Navy was a threat to British merchant shipping at the beginning of the war, and into the middle of it. And the Kriegsmarine, mostly the U-boats, sunk a lot of shipping, and it was a problem that had to be handled. But after reading account after account of different ships, I don't really understand the German naval strategy and how they executed it. It all seems like very much a sideshow to what was going on on land, and was really not given the attention or the resources that it needed to carry out its mission. I mean, you obviously have something with... So it was, <clears throat> excuse me, just kind of like a, yeah, do what you can. We're not going to give you every resource you need, but just try and pester them as much as you can, and you're, you'll probably uh, be defeated in the end. Okay. Some potential here. It's very clear needed to carry out its mission. I mean, you obviously have something with some potential here. It's very clearly shown in the opening years of the war. But even as Admiral Dernitz takes command at the beginning of 1943 and the Kriegsmarine gets a better advocate from then on, U-boats are not being made at the rate they need to keep up with their losses. Never mind to build up the force they need to actually win the war. And as the British improve their technology and tactics to deal with them, the Kriegsmarine seems almost stagnant. And on top of that, you see ships like the Bismarck sent out virtually on their own to try to relieve some of the situation, pretty much damning it to be sunk. I almost feel for the Kriegsmarine commanders who had to be tearing their hair out to get the attention they needed for a very important aspect of the war, holding back the Western allies and simply not being able to. Are we boned? Yeah, we're boned. So you're just like the less favorite child to the army, I guess. I mean, the more I look into German resource issues, the more I'm surprised how far they get. But I'm even wondering... Before learning about all of the oil and other resource issues they had, I was sort of like, well, why shouldn't they do this? Why shouldn't they do that? And now that I've learned so much about their issues with oil and other resources, I feel like I'm over... I'm over calibrating and seeing them as as too as more weak than they were. But I, I'm just I'm saying, how can you expect them to push the resources they need towards their navy when they have their hands full with uh, the army, especially with the Eastern Front open? Now, this is Germany that we're talking about, and there were shortages of everything, and who knows what building more ships or U-boats would have done to tank, aircraft, or small yeah. arms production. But these sailors are going out there trying to hold back what was pretty much an unstoppable force in the form of the Royal and U.S. navies, and at times would not even be able to replenish their own numbers. And it makes me wonder what the British would have thought in those early years where the U-boat menace was such a big deal if they knew the kind of shoestring support they were getting from Hitler and the powers that be. And although a large part of the Kriegsmarine was out of the picture and really couldn't do much in the latter third of the war... But That's true, that might have been pretty demoralizing if they knew just how little effort they were putting towards the U-boats and just how effective they were. That might have made them seem much more threatening, seeing how this is them at their, you know, lowest um, capability in terms of resources. Like, if the if, imagine... How effective they would be if Germany had the ability to put, you know, three times as much of their attention towards it. But they were able to accomplish previously, and still able to accomplish in small numbers, is actually fairly impressive. 
thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build and personalize your online presence from websites to online stores and marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace has a great focus on the customizability of their product and being able to make sure your website completely reflects your needs. Building a website with them is really easy, even for newcomers, and offers an almost overwhelming amount of options to change every detail of every page with a large catalog of starter templates catered to any type of website you're looking to build, from blogs to portfolios that avoid being the same kind of cookie cutter website. You can create your own online business or side pages to sell products and detailed analytics on inventory their, their and sales content, that can I'm connect to your social media accounts the, uh, for easy sharing of your content. Yes. So say there's some YouTuber who totally doesn't know what he's talking about about the Kriegsmarine and you want the world to know. Squarespace has got you covered. That's that's just an example, actually. Don't, don't do that. So if Squarespace sounds like something for you, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash potential history and use code potential history to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'd also like to thank my patrons on Patreon and Gerald Tan for selecting this video topic. The Kriegsmarine hasn't been something I've focused on too much in the past. It seems kind of an open and shut topic in what they were able to accomplish in the war and when they weren't, just due to numbers and all the things I mentioned. And because of that, I haven't really looked into the timeline of what they were able to do and what they were working with. And because he kept his topic so broad, I was able to, and it was really interesting to see the relationship between the planning at the top and the realities of what the war in the Atlantic were. And if there are any more interesting tidbits to do with that, or any good stories I haven't run across yet, feel free to let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon. Good video. You can even make what? I don't know. Crease Marine. Cool video. Yeah, interesting how they had, were so little supplied and were yet so effective. And, um, like you said, the frustration that must have been, uh, with the you know, captains of each of the German ships in the Atlantic must have been high. But what can you do? They had troubles on the mainland. They couldn't give you the uh, the supplies that you needed. What's going on? See you next time.